So those are the open questions for the research. Okay, any questions? The next topic is uh, the reconfigurable logic, or you know, the FPGA is a good example for the reconfigurable logic. And uh, this is a trade-off between those different uh, computing platforms. We have the CPU, GPU, FPGA, ASIC, the application-specific uh, integrated circuits. So the trade-off is between the performance and the flexibility or the programmability. So for the CPU, you know, it's most uh, flexible, pro uh, programmable, because you have write your C++ code or whatever code, and it, it can run all kinds of uh, applications. Okay, so it's very flexible. But of course, the efficiency is lowest because you have you have to support so many different applications. So the efficiency in terms of the speed, latency, or the energy efficiency is the lowest. And then if you go to the other side, like ASIC solution, so it's high, very high performance because that chip is designed specifically for this application. So it can run very fast for that application. Of course, then it's only limited to that application. So FPGA is somewhere in between, okay? So uh, uh, it's somewhere in between. You can have some flexibility because you can reconfigure your uh, logic for different applications. Uh, uh, so, but the performance is not as good as ASIC. Of course, better than CPU. Uh, and FPGA, the <coughs> programmability uh, nowadays, I think, improve or not. So the, 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 there are many languages you can use to directly write the code into the FPGA and configure the FPGA these days. Uh, open CLO and so on. So this is uh, the, the general trade-offs between those platforms. And if you look at the FPGA architecture, essentially, as uh, uh, architecture like this, it's uh, like you have different blocks. Uh, the logic block, this LB, is your logic block. And within logic block, <coughs> essentially, uh, look up tables. Like, uh, you, because your logic, no matter which logic, you can always use lookup table to implement your logic, like your land law, or like a, a three bit, a three input, four input land law. You can always have the truth table, and then you can always program that truth table into a lookup table, and then you have the input and output relationship, and then you you have your log logic there. So to implement the lookup table, okay, the, better, the, the, the typical way is you have the S run cells. Here is M, this each block is one S run cell to store one entry for the lookup table. And then you have a max tree to choose which, depending on your input bit here, then what is the output, then from this max you, you choose the, 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 the output. So this is uh, the lookup table. And then the lookup table can implement some logic. But for a larger design, you need to uh, configure the routing between the logic block. So there will be routing n blocks. For example, the collecting block, CB, is to collect the logic block to the routing channel. And then the routing channel here, the switch box, is going to have this kind of uh, six transistor routing switch. There are many kinds of routing switch, but this is one of the standard one. So basically, you want to control the data flow, which direction, what direction you need to uh, choose. Once you get the signal from, let's say, from mm -hmm. the uh, left, then you can route it to the up or down, depending on your logic data flow. And then essentially you have pass gate there, and each pass gate is controlled by a memory cell, and the, typically is S run. So if S run, let's say no matter which uh, block we are looking at here, essentially the basic function is this one. 
SRAM controls the pass gate. If you look at the, 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 those uh, blocks, it's the SRAM controls the pass gate. And if SRAM data is one, the pass gate is on, you can route the signal A to B. If the SRAM is zero, then this is off. A, A and B are disconnected. So essentially, this is uh, the FPGA. Of, of, of course, it was a very uh, simplified version. So this is uh, uh, how we do the FPGA <coughs> these days. And uh, if you look at the SRAM percentage in the S FPGA, at 40% to 50% of the chip area are occupied by this SRAM. And this SRAM is also called the configuration bits for your FPGA. So every time when you uh, uh, turn on your FPGA, you need to compile uh, your, 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 your configuration, and then that means you are going to write those SRAM cells to the correct uh, data pattern, so you know the correct function of your logic or correct uh, routing direction uh, between the blocks. So you, you need to have some time to write the data into those SRAM. And then after the SRAM bits are there, then you can run your logic. So you see the SRAM consume a lot of space here. And the question is, can we replace SRAM with emerging technology? So here are some of the proposals. A very simple way to do this is just to replace the SRAM 6 transistor here with this 1T2R cell, one transistor, two resistor. So essentially here, those two resistor is between the VD and the ground. So it's like a voltage divider. And you see here, if you configure those uh, two resistors, let's say this is top one is on, or bottom one is off, you know, this is a voltage divider. So this voltage is very close to VDD, right? So this is VDD. The, this transistor is on, A and B are connected. And uh, the other way, if it's off and on, like this, you know, this is very close to ground, and then this A and B is disconnected. So this is uh, the way you can replace the SRAM. So the advantage, okay, with this design, of course, 6T transistor, SRAM become 1T2R, and then, as I said, R does not really occupy space. So it's essentially it's 1T, this T is to program those two R, to program uh, an on and off state. So the, uh, the area is much uh, re reduced. If the area is much reduced, then the routing distance also reduced. Your latency will improve because of the shortened RC delay. So this is one advantage. Smaller area, faster speed of your FPGA. The second advantage is that because this is non-retail memory. So you can enable this instant on operation, right? You don't need to load your configuration from somewhere. Once you power on, your configuration is there. So you can start your logic operation right away. And also, it enables the runtime reconfiguration. So if you only need to change part of your design, then you just locally program those on and off states of your memory cell. Then you can change your logic even during the runtime. For SRAM, it's almost impossible because you have to store the operation and then load in the uh, data from somewhere and program your SRAM. So it's uh, almost impossible for runtime reconfiguration. And uh, those are the benefits. And here are some uh, on design. And um, uh, as the physical uh, uh, layer, so you see the layout. If you do this RAM version, you, the total chip can be like forty percent smaller. Uh, so this is uh, pretty good. But there are some concerns of this design. So any idea? What are the possible problems? Any idea in this design? And uh, I have two bullets there. So the, I think the key challenge in this design is that 
you have the VDD to ground pass. Okay, that means you are always leaking. So to minimize this, the resistance needs to be very high. The on-off ratio may not be high. You maybe just need a 10. But the, even the on state need to be have very high resistance. Otherwise, the ability to ground will be like short, right? So, so this is a key challenge. Uh, so that means this two resistance, two, re, two resistor, the resistance or let's say the leakage current needs to be smaller than one S1 cells leakage current to be competitive. Right. Even you use S ray, S ray is leaking, right? You know that you have the question in your metering exam. So S ray is leaking, okay. This one is also leaking. But you need to make sure that this one's leaking leakage smaller than the S one's leakage. If you can satisfy that, then this is okay. But that is very challenging because the on state resistance needs to be above like hundreds of mega ohm or giga ohm. So 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 in your homework you are using like kilo ohm, right? So this is very difficult. So this is a, a, a concept, and uh, I'll show you some of the prototype chip. I think this is designed by Stanford. Uh, again, at some old technology, 180 nanometer. And R1 is integrated between metal 5 and metal 6. And uh, in this particular design, their R1 technology is very good in terms of the uh, Resistance, you see the on state is like a 10 mega ohm, off state is like giga ohm, so it's pretty high, relatively high. So then you can enable these operations. So this uh, chip uh, is uh, published, uh, I think, in this VLSI conference. So this is uh, one design, okay, uh, but this is not only design. The other design you can have here is uh, to replace the from A to B. You remember it uh, used to be a pass gate, right? Remember it's like uh, this A to B. It's like a pass gate. So uh, you have memory to control this pass gate. And previously we re replaced the S one with this one T two R. So a more aggressive design is to replace the pass gate between A and B with the, the resistor. So this is uh, more aggressive. Okay, now your signal is going to go through from A to B through this RN cell. And then the requirement is very different in this case. In this case, you need a very low R on for the resistor here. Because you hope that when the resistance this, this memory cell is in the low resonance state, in the on state, then A and B are short circuit. And then you want the resistance in the off state, or high resonance state, A and B are open circuit. So you need a very large on-off on ratio for those two. And also for the on state, you want the on state to be small resistance, very, probably smaller than one kilo ohm. Because a to B, you have the RC delay signal. You want R to be small. How small? If you use a pass gate, one transistor, pass gate, the transistor channel resistance is typically a few kilo ohm. So if your A to B R on resistance smaller than this kilo ohm, then you are good. But the R off needs to be very large. So uh, this is uh, the, the, the key challenge here. And of course, there are some other challenges like A to B because you always route the signal, so you have constant voltage across this. Then the reliability of this device is also a concern. And so to enable this, I think there are some progress in the recent years by some of the Japanese group, uh, by some companies in Japan. They invest in this so-called the atom switch kind of technology. So essentially, it's uh, like uh, CB run, uh, conductive bridge random access memory. So you have two electrodes, and one of that is copper. When you apply large voltage to the copper, you are going to diffuse copper into this dielectric, and then have a bridge. Then it's in the 
Lorentz state is like short circuit between those two electrodes. So this is the, uh, they call it atom switch because they diffuse a copper atom into this uh, dianetric. So to improve the design, I think the, 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 the idea is to have the, between A and B, they are going to have two <coughs> cells back to back. And then this is to help increase the off state resistance because we have to go through two, two cells. So this is uh, the, uh, the design. And uh, uh, there are some details I will skip. So you can arrange this into a crossbar fashion like this. But you need to have some programming uh, tran transistor to select this cell. So you can use a transistor to do that, or use some uh, diode, or they call it a varistor. So essentially you need some nonlinear IV characteristics. This is the same concern as we have before for the crossbar array. So what you want is uh, here when you apply both ones from the row and the column, you're going to select this uh, cell, and this cell is going to be turned on, and then you can route the signal from A to B here. And all the others will be off. And uh, uh, for the same row, the, the, the cells along the same row is in the half select condition as the crossbar array. So you want to make sure that only one of those is turned on, the other one is still off. So you don't have the path from A, 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 A to B here. So there are some details in the implementation. And uh, this is the design for this uh, routing switch. You can use this to do the routing. And uh, here are some demonstrations for this kind of uh, approach. And uh, here are some estimations of the area if you replace all the routing switch uh, uh, and also the um, lookup table uh, with this kind of, uh, from the S1 to this kind of approach. You can save like, a, uh, this is I think to the scale. You can, the total chip area can be reduced to like this. this. And uh, you can use this to implement the routing switch or the lookup table. And here are some demonstrations, a very small scale, like uh, you, uh, 50 by 20 crossbar array. So here basically you can program each cross point according to your lookup table, according to your routing uh, topology. And then you can have the input and output relationship defined by the data pattern you store in the crossbar array. So you can implement your logic. So here they implement the like, four input XOR logic using this kind of lookup table through this uh, routing switch. So you get rid of those S1. And so it's very compact. Of course, the reliability is still a concern here. right? So the logic uh, operations, uh, you constantly route your signal through this uh, device. So the reliability is a concern. Okay, so you see the applications uh, in the FPGA. You can re replace the lookup table routing switch. You save the area, enable the uh, instant on operation and runtime reconfiguration. But the reliability is a key concern here. And uh, 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 for the FPGA, endurance may not be a concern because you don't reconfigure many times. Uh, but you do need to put data retention uh, because your data, your configuration is essentially stored as a memory state. And also the availability <coughs> is a concern. If you have error or failure in one of the cells, your logic is essentially wrong, right? So how do you recover this kind of uh, error? It's an open question. For the memory array, you can do the ECC error correction, but this logic is wrong. So how do you do recover this? So those are the open questions. I think that's all for.